In this video, I'm going to share with you my 10 tips on how to become a doer instead of a thinker. Let's do all the things! What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome, I'm Coach Simon. I upload weekly videos on how to simplify your life and become the person you aspire to be. So if you're interested in personal development, hit the big subscribe button below and the bell next to it to get notified every time I upload a new video. Now let's jump right into the video. Alright guys, before we jump into my 10 tips, I gotta be honest with you. I've always been an overthinker. And when it came to taking action, I used to play all the possible scenarios in my mind before I took action. Well, turns out that all the planning and not executing was exactly what was keeping me stuck. So in this video, I want to share with you all the mistakes I've made so far in my journey as an entrepreneur and all the lessons that I've learned. Now let's jump right into my first tip. Write down your goals. Nope, you can't skip this one. If it's not on paper, it didn't happen. Okay, maybe you could use an app on your phone, on your computer, but that's about it. You need to write your goals, no matter how small or big they are. The act of writing things down on paper is what puts them into the material world and makes it easier for you to achieve them. Now, how do you go about writing your goals? If you have a big goal, such as writing a book, that's exactly where you start. First, you need to write down your big goal and turn it into smaller chunks. Reverse engineer what it takes to write a book. For example, you would have to pick a topic, map out what you're going to write, and then block time to write one page every day. The key here is to map it all out on paper, so it's easier for you to see it every single day and take action. Which actually leads me to my second tip. Set deadlines for your goals. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. A goal without a deadline is just a dream. So if you want to execute on your goal and make it achievable, you need to set a deadline. In the example I just gave you, with writing a book, you could set a deadline of one year. Let's say you would publish it yourself. How much time would it take for you to pick the topic? How much time would you block per day to finish it in 10 months? And how much time would it take to hire an editor and a designer to make the book cover? Keep asking questions and setting deadlines. And here's a pro tip. Next time you set a deadline, give yourself more time than you think you're going to need. Don't underestimate the power of distractions, your emotions and unforeseen circumstances, such as the one we're in the middle of right now. My third tip is to move into action quickly. Let's say you have a goal, mini goals, to-do lists, but how do you move into action quickly? Well, I have a few tricks up my sleeve and I'm going to share them with you now. The first one is to use the 5 second rule by Mel Robbins. I've mentioned this in several videos before, but for a good reason. It actually changed my life and it has the potential to turn you from a thinker into a doer if you commit to doing it daily. Here's what the 5 second rule is all about. Every time you have an idea of doing something, you need to count down from 5 and move into action. Otherwise, your brain will kill it. Here's an example from my daily routine. I've been practicing the Wim Hof breathing technique lately. And some mornings I simply don't want to do it. When that happens, I use the 5 second rule. I count down from 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and simply start. Another trick that can help you move into action quickly is to do all things that take you under 2 minutes immediately. As David Allen says, if it takes you less than 2 minutes, just do it immediately. This is perfect for overthinkers and procrastinators because it gets you to move into action very, very quickly. It pulls you back to reality and you get so much done when you realize that some things will literally take you a minute to do. And my last hack on how to move into action quickly is to have something to look forward to. We often postpone things when they seem unappealing, boring or difficult to do. If you have a reward waiting for you at the end of it, you will definitely have something to look forward to. And that will give you that little push that you need to start taking action right away. Now that we know how to move into action quickly, let's get into my fourth tip. Push through resistance. One of the reasons you're a thinker and not a doer yet is because of your resistance. We all have resistance. That's our brain's natural response when it comes to doing unfamiliar things or things that we perceive as painful. Your mind will always prefer pleasure over pain. Therefore, most of the things we're doing would be perceived as a threat at first. Now, how can you push through your resistance? There is a great book by Stephen Pressfield. Here's one of my favorite quotes from this book. It's not the writing part that's hard. What's hard is sitting down to write. The main idea is to recognize resistance for what it really is and to prioritize creating things over your fear. 
In fact, I had to push through my resistance to shoot this video. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to push through my resistance to edit it later. Yep, totally what happened. The War of Art is one of the best books I've read in the past few months, so I highly recommend it. If you want to check it out, I will leave a link in the description box below. Tip number five is to do one thing at a time. I used to be a major multitasker, until I realized that multitasking was just another way for me to simulate working. I found that the quality of my work suffered and my anxiety felt much worse, so I decided to give monotasking a try. And to be honest with you, I've never felt calmer or more productive. Do one thing at a time, even if it's just for 10 minutes. Commit to answering that email, writing that blog post, or designing that social media post. One of the reasons we feel distracted all the time is because we have cognitive biases that are preventing us from focusing on the things that actually matter to us. I've compiled the top 15 most common cognitive biases for you guys, so you can download your free cheat sheet by clicking the link in the description box below or visiting bit.ly slash 15 biases. Tip number six is to let go of perfectionism. One of the reasons we overthink and don't take action is because we want it to be perfect. Here's a quick story. Three years ago, while I was still working as a full-time copywriter, I had a dream of starting my own business. So I asked my husband to help me set up a website. It took me one year, one entire year, to decide on the brand colors, logo, and all that jazz. I still to this day regret how much time I've wasted due to my perfectionism. So if you're still on that boat, please stop wasting your life. Perfectionism is a dream killer. I've made an entire video on how to stop being a perfectionist, so I will link it below and also in the cards if you want to watch it next. Tip number seven is to get out of the trap of being busy. That's a pretty common trap. If you're constantly busy, but your business is not making any money, or you're constantly checking off items on your to-do list, but it gets even bigger, we need to talk. There is a huge difference between being busy and being productive. I fell into that trap so many times that it even became a part of my identity for a while. My friends would ask me, how are you doing? And I would answer, super busy. It was like a badge of honor of some kind. Now I know better. Focus on working smarter, not harder. If you focus on the right things, they will get you results. But how do you know what to focus on? Let's get into my next point. Surround yourself with doers. Your vibe creates your tribe. So if you're constantly complaining about things that are not working out in your life, you're probably spending a lot of time with people who also think more than they act. I'm not saying that you should stop seeing your friends if they're not as hardworking or as ambitious as you, but it's important to find people who are also doers. I found that accountability partners work very well and there are lots of wonderful Facebook groups with people who share the same interests as you. So it all comes down to you wanting to find these people instead of waiting around for them to find you. A little bit of tough love here, but hey, you know I don't hold back when it comes to helping you out, guys. So I'm always going to give it to you straight. Tip number nine on how to become a doer instead of a thinker is to celebrate your wins. Every time you achieve something, reward yourself. This will signal your brain that whatever you just did led to something pleasant at the end. So work with your brain instead of against it. Remember the metaphor about the carrot and the stick? The carrot in this case is your reward and the stick is the punishment. I've tried both of these and here's my personal take. I think it's better to reward yourself by celebrating wins. Here's how your mind works. It's pretty fascinating actually. Your mind loves what's familiar and will do whatever it can to keep you safe from the unfamiliar. Here's how that applies to our example. When you're used to thinking instead of doing, your mind is at peace because it's what it knows, it's familiar. Now, if you turn that around and turn doing into something you do daily, plus add a reward at the end of it, your mind will adjust to that change and no longer find it unfamiliar. So by taking action every single day in different areas of your life, your whole identity will change in time and you will turn from a thinker into a doer. Which leads me to my next tip have reasonable expectations. Many of us don't want to take action, not because we're lazy, but because we don't want to fail. If your expectations for yourself are too high, it's normal to always look for ways to avoid taking action and stay in fantasy land. By having reasonable expectations and being compassionate with yourself, you will no longer perceive taking action as something threatening. And you also don't need to become the next opera. That's your ego talking. 
Be ambitious, have big goals, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, remember that you're not a human doing, you're just a human being. Question of the day. Which one of these tips resonated with you the most? Let me know in the comments below. So far in this video, we talked about the 10 ways to become a doer instead of a thinker. But if you want to take it a step further, don't forget to download your free cheat sheet with the top 15 most common cognitive biases by clicking the link in the description box below. If you found this video helpful, please like it and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because in the next video, we're going to talk about how to overcome imposter syndrome and put your best work into the world. In the meantime, while you wait for this video, I post a lot of content on personal development, so make sure to check out these two videos as well. I love you guys and I'll talk to you in the next one.